There's song and there's language. There's words and there's tones sung. Do you think we came, that we came out with song first and language followed? Is, and it's because it's related to poetry and you sing and you write operas. So when words are expressed, maybe we'll say in the European version, you know, in the alphabet that's this is then Mr. Gutenberg and then Mr. McLuhan says they are all down like this. So these words are in fact this as the historical accumulation of all these cultures. And you write in English. When those words are spoken, they do one thing for you, and when they are sung, they do a different thing for you. So the source of song from us and music is not the same as the source of words and intellect and emotion. So my first question is, which do you think came first to the human species? Oh my golly. Words or song? Um, well, if you want to think about wordless song, then we might say that. Right. Uh, uh, in terms of humming and chanting without necessarily uh, thinking of, about uh, a linguistic concept. Which is keening, which is cooing, which is lovemaking. Ululating, is... ululation. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so on. All, all these forms of oral expression probably developed first whistling, you know, as a, as a means to communicate across distances, uh, especially for the hunter-gatherers out there. Uh, and of course, of course, a whole lot of grunting. I like to think of English of the English language beginning with all people just grunting. Grunting, making love. Grunting when they're cooking. Grunting when they're hunting. Just grunt, 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 grunt. And so when you look at the early English language, it's all monosyllables. Moon, sun, Dog, cat, it's all simple words, uh, because I think that's how it evolved. Uh, as people just just uh, directly the expressing English language or all language, English language, English in particular, but probably it's the true for for all languages. All languages, all cultures have to begin with the with the hunt for food, growing the food, uh, preparing food. That's where it all has to come from. So you have to, you have to appease or propitiate the the gods of one sort or another. To make sure the harvest comes in, uh, you got to sacrifice a few maidens here and there. You got to tear out a few hearts here and there in order to make sure that the crops are good uh, and all the rest of it. And the language that goes along with that is probably a very basic, which is not to say that the thought is basic, but that you want to be direct in your expression. You want to be concrete in your expression. The sun is there. The wolves are over there. Uh, it's 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 going to be very clear so everybody can understand. What's going putting, on? It's a matter of life and death. Which is putting ration into the emotional. Right. Right. All right. Uh, you need you need safety. You need shelter. Um, uh, you want to know where all the buffalo are congregated uh, for crying out loud. I, I mean, I love that that place name. Head smashed in at Buffalo Jump. <laughs> that says it right. There. That's a, that's a great place name. They should all be like. They should all be like that. You know, think about any any city and 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 change it up. And to give it that kind of uh, hyphenated monosyllable uh, place name, uh, uh, just to see what what kind of concept you'd come up with. Okay, so if you had to rename Toronto, which is a nice name, in terms of head smashed in Buffalo Jump, you had to create that new title for Toronto. What would it be? Oh, that's that's, that's actually very easy. Uh, uh, car axle torn off by pothole. <laughs> Axle torn off by bottle. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> That's Toronto right now, all the time. Actually, all the time. For crying out loud, this is an impossible city. But uh, that's another. That's another point. But anyway, yeah, the language begins with the need to name basics: days, nights, uh, the, the stars, um, where where the food is, how you're gonna get the food, uh, birth, death, um, all of that. Uh, all of our, the words, I, I believe, are, are pretty basic for that. And then it's with the, uh, the, the Roman invasion, the Norman invasion of, of Britain that English begins to move away from the simple uh, grunt type words uh, to more elaborate expression. Courtly terms, French is a courtly language or the language of, of courtship and so on, language of diplomacy even, even now still. Right, you don't overthrow the government. You have a coup. <laughs> you 
you don't assassinate the 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 president. You 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 simply um, have a have a, a coup d'état, uh, and, and and so on. Um, so so you have this courtly language, which also is a language of euphemism and so on. Polysyllabic, uh, uh, for the most part, fairly soft sounding, uh, coming in. And then uh, same thing with Latin. Latin is is uh, is also a very lyrical language, very lyrical tongue, also full of uh, euphemisms, at least in its usage in, in, in English, more sophisticated, polysyllabic once again. And so one of the reasons why English is such a great language uh, for writers uh, of all sorts is that you have those different textures and tones within the language. And you can sometimes achieve great effects by mixing deliberately the Latinate or, or, or French aspects of the language and the old Germanic, uh, Nordic, uh, Anglo-Saxon root words uh, and, and, uh, uh, and create all kinds of energy and dynamism by, by deliberately combining these very different forms of, of English.